Yeah. Perfect Plex Radio. We about to go live on them. Mike Knox. That's for three X's because he's hardcore. Are y'all ready? I go by the name Fred Knox. We about to give y'all something special. You ready? Ready? Welcome back, everybody, to Around the Blocks with Mike Knox and the real C.P. Platt. Here we are to talk about this world we live in of professional wrestling. Welcome to the week that is and has been professional wrestling. And my name is Mike Knox. And people, as you already know, I spell my name with three X's. You can follow me on Twitter, wherever social media is sold, which is absolutely three by my namesake. I am loud. Fellas, I get loud. And fellas, frankly... If you're not making her loud, that's your problem, not mine. And you can also follow him as well on the Twitter. You see it right there at his love below where it is at the real CP. Platt, what's going on, Chris? How you doing, brother? Greetings and salutations, Mr. Knox and everybody out there in internet land. It's fun to be here again and talk about this weird, wonderful, wacky, wild world of wrestling. Yeah, it's a wild, wacky, damn world of professional wrestling. And as the rest of the world continues to... Uh, hashtag stay home, stay safe. We have known that this world we live in, this wild and crazy zany world of professional wrestling is doing the opposite. We are getting word now that today's Raw will not be a pre-retaped Raw or pre-recorded Raw, if you will, so to speak. It will be live tonight, Chris. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, Mike, uh, let me say it like this, man. I don't purport to be some sort of expert when it comes to TV rights agreements and the nuances and in and outs of the contract. But the only thing that possibly makes sense to me in this scenario is that Vince McMahon was somehow worried that if he didn't hold up his obligation to put on, you know, X amount of live shows per year, perhaps his partners, Fox and USA, perhaps they might find a loophole, some way to back out of the TV rights agreement or maybe even renegotiate it. So I think that he feels pressure to do that, especially considering that they're a television product now. Like, that's where they make the bulk of their money. They cannibalize their pay-per-view market with the network. I, I, I think we all can agree that the network, even from a financial standpoint, has been a disappointment. And, yeah, they got some money coming in from them jamming the sand shows out in Saudi Arabia, but if reports to be, or to be believed, the, the prince ain't breaking bread like he's supposed to. <laughs> so I think they're feeling some pressure to keep putting on these live shows to keep that rolling. And I, I'm going to tell you like this, man. If I'm a wrestler in the back, you know, one of the talents, if ever y'all were going to have the testicular or ovarian <laughs> fortitude to start a union, <laughs> yeah. then, to start a union, you know, to quote John Cena, your time is now because, A, you've got the court of public dependent, you know, with you. They, they're with you. They got your back. Because overall, this just looks like a bad look. Yeah. And you got to know that there's a lot of wrestlers in the back that aren't comfortable with this decision, but they don't have the stroke or the cachet to say mm -hmm. nothing. So they mm -hmm. just got to keep showing up and so they can keep cashing them checks. That That's the sad part, Chris, is that um, they don't have the union. We've, we've said for years, many years, actually, that they should have a union. But the guys in the barrel and the women in the back are afraid to do so. This is their livelihood. It's, it's, it's like anybody else who has a paying job in the United States of America or even around the, the around the globe, you have an obligation to show up. You have to work. You don't work. You don't get paid. And if the company is saying we're still open, like a lot of jobs that are out there, your FedExes, your post office, your banks, uh, your grocery stores, et cetera, et cetera. Unlike myself at a hotel resort at Walt Disney World, um, we're not open. So if you if I could go to work, if I if I, if I got a call today, if I got a call with live on air i would answer for my employer and i would go to work tomorrow morning if they tell me to show up at my regular time so um they have no choice now we can always add the moral compass of should they or shouldn't they and and, and i also lie on can you afford it or can you not afford it i remember always being mad at, at cm punk not cm punk the, the man, which is Phil Brooks, I respect the man Phil Brooks for taking a stance against his company and saying, I will not do this. But the character hit, he made us all fall in love with Chicago made punk, which, by the way, he's actually from Rosemont, Illinois. <laughs> Chicago made punk um, said that he would do this. He loved us and he would do this. So if you have a job on one hand, you got to go to work if you got to pay the bills. But if you can afford to say, you know, fuck your company and not go, then you can stand there as well, Chris. 
No, I totally agree. And, you know, listen to your Uncle Chris on this one, man. The, your only goal in life should be to put yourself in a position where you have the leverage to do exactly what the hell you want to do. And he, he worked his ass off and he put himself in that position where when it wasn't fun anymore or mm -hmm. he felt unfulfilled or whatever the case may be, he was in a position to walk away. And But we're seeing it now out here in the real world, man. People that even people that are making money and that are banking. The majority of us are living from paycheck to paycheck. And we see how fragile our right. way of life is through this Absolutely. pandemic. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so I so I understand. Yeah, like if yeah, if the boss says you got to come in, you got to come in. I understand that sentiment. And like you said, well, so they're gonna come in. Tonight's gonna be a Monday Night Raw, and we shall dissect that and break that down in the coming shows to come. But this weekend, again, talking about this wild, crazy world of professional something we live in, where the NBA has officially canceled their entire season. Uh, for the regular season, anyhow, you know, if there's a playoffs, will that be an asterisk for LeBron or will it not be an asterisk for LeBron? Um, you know, you all, all, that dig in there, yeah, I had to. It's, it's what it is. <laughs> um, uh, uh, six rings. It's all that matters, Sean. OK, come to me back when he had six rings. Then we're going to say, well, he was six and oh. OK, so that's that, that would be what we say after that, after, you know, he surpasses six. <laughs> I, I think he will surpass six, to be honest with you. But um, Ronda. Rowdy, Rousey. Oh, Chris, 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 Chris. She has some things to say about the fans, my brother. Oh, she, she certainly <laughs> did. Now, but we got to we got to run this back uh, okay. uh, just a tad. We got to okay. run it back a little bit because okay. this war of words actually started online with Nia Jax, aka Big Fine, and you know one of the <laughs> Big Tasty. That the Is that the real Big Tasty? That the real yes. big tasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tastes like a honey bun, I'm sure. I have okay. no doubt. So I, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. But you know, one of the IWC's favorite things to do is to criticize Naya and right. say that she's an unfit worker or unsafe worker, yes. or yada, yada, yada. So her response to that was to bring up that Ronda Rousey actually injured Alexa Bliss in a match. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, Earlier last week on the Steve O podcast, which y'all would know Steve O as the guy on Jackass, yeah. we get high and run into shit like that's that. the guy who put the the M eighty on his balls. For those who don't remember, just continue. Yes. Anything where I'm, nothing's worth me blasting off my manhood. Just gone. Just saying. It's not. It's not. So while on that podcast, the subject of Ronda perhaps making a WWE return was broached, and mm -hmm. her response was, and I quote, "I love performing." I love the girls. I love being out there. But at the end of the day, I was just like, fuck these fans, dude. My family loves me and they appreciate me and want all my energy to go into them. She continues. That was my decision at the end of the day. It's like, hey, girls, love what you're doing. I'm going to try and take all my momentum and push you guys as far as I can. Fly, little birds, fly. I'm going fucking home. And that was basically it. <laughs> There's a lot of things we can take from this. And I love her new hashtag. Like, you know, you have a hashtag to your to your Twitter handle. Hers is KFAB Killer. KFAB Killer. And here's why I say this. This is why all this is amusing to me on different levels and why I can and will always say thanks for listening to the show for the intelligent wrestling fan right here on Fox Sports Radio Around the Blocks with Mike Knox, part of Soul in Sports and also part of the he the chair shot hashtag ow, use your head okay can also be found wherever podcasts are so which are absolutely free wherever you have a podcast it's there including on iheart radio and other podcast streaming services but this was a word from the first time i saw it so that's the first thing the second thing that I love the most about this is the fact that not only is it a work, what she says is true. Everything Ronda Rousey said is true. That's where we have to put on our big boy pants and our big boy girl shorts and say, I'm an intelligent wrestling fan that know what wrestling really is. Not disrespecting them, but knowing what it really is. You get hurt. You do these things, but we know that it's brilliantly designed so no one can physically get hurt. This is why New Jack 
will never have a job in professional wrestling again. This is why I've never liked New Jack and New Jack can cuss me out and probably come stab me in my sleep with my kids being home and because he doesn't care. OK, but this is why, because you have to trust your partner. That's why we have a segment, you know, best dance partner. We all know that who you dance with the best. Let's dance because. You're only as good as the person across from you. So, yeah, we know it's everything that Ronda Rousey said, which I'm not still going to say. As you can see, I danced around that, Chris. But it is what it is. So, for anybody in the wrestling world that was offended by Ronda Rousey's statements, <laughs> she did her job. She did exactly what she wanted you guys to know that she was doing because the last thing you need to know from Ronda Rousey at all is how good... She used to be in the UFC because she was an ass kicking machine. I had the saying, Chris, she was beating girls in an Instagram. And it's before Instagram got the 30 seconds in a minute. You remember that? Yes. We're talking about completely dominating chicks in 15 seconds was Ronda Rousey. But, you know, after she got her ass kicked, which it happens to the best of everybody. Why does it happen to the best of everybody? Because she was a pioneer. Ronda Rousey came in an area when these women were not this advanced. Ronda Rousey is the reason why these girls got a chance to show how good they were from other places of the country. Because she was that good in the face of women's MMA. But like all things, including Brock Lesnar, okay, because of his popularity in wrestling made him the biggest UFC star, okay, until Conor McGregor came along. Once she did that, Chris... She did end up becoming a WWE champion because that's what they do. First and foremost, I have a very entertaining New Jack story that I can't tell on air, you know, to protect the guilty. But that's the protect the guilty. There. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, so Naya did follow up on Twitter. Yeah. Before I get into my spiel, I got I do have to read her tweet. And Naya on Twitter a few days ago, she says, "I can't wait for Ronda to one day return to WWE." Even if WWE orders me to make Ronda look good in the ring, which is the only way for Ronda to look good in the ring with me, I'll risk my job to go down in history as the one from this biz that knocked her the fluck out. Hashtag test me, bitch. <laughs> and Mike, we were, we were talking a little bit before we went on air, and we, we have similar feelings to this. Shout out to Michael Lee, by the way, who pointed out that every person who got offended got work. Absolutely. That's the great thing about this weird, wonderful, wacky world of wrestling is that everything's a work. And even if it's a shoot, it's still a work because eventually it's going to get worked into the work. Mm -hmm. And we know, like you pointed out, Ronda Rousey cut her teeth in the UFC, which they've taken the pro wrestling formula and have done it to perfection. Perfection. So she knows how to make statements out there, controversial statements that are going to be provo thought provoking and going to provoke emotion and set stuff up. I like she knows what she's doing. So. Even though I believe a thousand and ten percent that both of these women feel exactly what they tell you that they're feeling, they're still working because it all falls into the context of professional wrestling. And it goes back to what I said. I know it's a circular argument, but it's the bottom line. It's all a work. Even when it's not a work, <laughs> it's still a work because they can't not work. They're, they're, they're always working. Listen. And I want to see a Nia Jax Ronda Rousey match now, don't you? I've always wanted to see it. We're going to see it. And I, I can't wait to see it because this this is my thing. And I and I stay and I stand with this. I've always said this. And the work that it worked on people that didn't understand this is why to me Rhonda had Kurt Angle appeal. Okay, because she really is a legitimate badass. Okay? And if these girls are not trained, maybe um help me out. Uh Sonya Deville, right? That's her name. Maybe she, she's MMA trained. Maybe some girls who are MMA trained can defend themselves. Maybe Nia, because of her, her size and her power because of her size, can, you know, just, you know, just theologically, if she hit her the right spot, like if she was to hit um, Alexa Bliss, one of the reasons why you say you don't believe her as, a, as getting over as a champion because of her size and whatnot, she can really hurt her. You have to suspend your disbelief. So in the, in the, in the reality of what's real, to what to believe, Ronda would probably make these girls all tap out in an Instagram, Chris. I agree. And, you know, just to play devil's advocate here, I understand. Well, we've heard reports that there was a little bit of a dissension in the locker room in terms of when Ronda Rousey came in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, she literally ascended to the top of the card. You know, main event at WrestleMania, it gets no bigger than that. 
So from their perspective, I understand what they're saying. These are the women that are there night in and night out, you know, 200 X amount of days a year, busting their ass right. for an outsider to come in and get that notoriety. I can understand why they would feel a certain way. But at the same point in time, box office is box office. And it is what it is. Like that, th this is a personality driven business. All, all sports are, all combat sports are, they're personality driven. And, you know, shout out to Randall Keith Orton. I think he said yes. it best when The Rock came back. He initially said that he also felt a certain way when The Rock came back until he got his WrestleMania payoff. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Yeah. You get paid for doing what you do best and everything else stops and ceases to exist from that point on. So I can't be mad at Ronda for trying to get a payday. And in all fairness, again, as well, as you pointed out, she was asked a question, and the question led to this. Shout out to the Red Cup boys, the Street Profits themselves, okay? Got to turn this fan on, guys. It's a little hot in my office from time to time. but It's just water, y'all, I promise. Yeah, well, mine isn't just water, okay? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> All right. It, it, it's, just not, it's just not that. It's, it's, it's everything about this to me is great because, again, Ronda brings back in that fan base that hates the WWE, that hates wrestling, that thinks that, it's fake. It's not real. They're they're punks. They were losing a real fight fan base that, you know, uh, salivates for the WWE to fail, right? Including the other side of the wrestling fan that salivates for the WWE to fail, right? And you have the, the diehard wrestling fans are like, "F you, Ronda. You can't talk about our stuff like this. It's not fake." And it's this is why to me this was brilliant booking and this this might even be until SummerSlam. this may not be until maybe maybe there is an evolution too since that tiktok video came out the little girls brilliantly put together that all the female wrestlers retweeted and whatnot about having an evolution too so i don't know but whatever this leads to i do believe it leads to another payday for ronda rousey and the wwe chris your final thoughts on that i agree she's box office i mean you're not going to get on espn sports center with Sonya Deville tapping out Stephanie McMahon. With all due respects to Sonya Deville, that's just <laughs> not going to happen. It, it's not. And I'll drink to that. Okay, I'm sorry. I was taking a sip as you were finishing your conversation. But uh, Alexa Bliss, amongst other girls, um, she, you know, tweets, you know, I was almost on a year This, if, 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 if it's fake. And, you know, things along those lines of people who are just not happy with this situation with Ronda Rousey. But I, I think it's good. I think it's great. I can't wait for it to happen. I'm excited for it to happen because I'm excited to get Ronda Rousey back in the ring. Um, I still haven't got what I want, what I thought should have been the main event, the only main event that should have been WrestleMania, which was Charlotte, the greatest female wrestler of all time versus Ronda Rousey. Should have been that. Charlotte, the greatest female wrestler of all time. Charlotte Flair. Versus Ronda Rousey. So I need her back so I can get the greatest women's wrestler of all time. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. I need that in my life. Um, but um, moving on from that, Chris, uh, what else we had over the, over, the, over this past week in Raw? I know one thing, a little small note for those rest, uh, wrestling gamer fans out there. Uh, WWE 2K21 has been rumored. To not even be coming out. Now, you got all the jabs, Chris, coming from everywhere because wrestling sucks right now. The WWE sucks right now. But truth be told of the matter is, is that WWE 2K20 was just a very trash game. I was trying to try to use a better, a different word, maybe a bigger word to, to dilute the fact of how trash it was. But it's just a trash game. Yeah, they've done some updates on the game. The game's a little bit more smoother to play. But overall, it's just a trash game. So... Check that out. It's just rumors right now. Nothing has been uh, official uh, of why this game may be or may not be getting canceled. But it is being uh, rumored to being canceled. And all the major like sports gaming uh, outlets are reporting the same rumor that this game may not come out. Um, this past week, to me, because I want to talk about the biggest things in pro wrestling this week, right? Some of the biggest things, AEW continues, continues, Chris, to set the bar and how to do a wrestling event without a crowd in the in the, in the audience. Uh, they're, they're, they're ready for this. I think they're good at doing it. Cody Rhodes, I have said this from day two, not me, 
brother of mine, Phil Bailey, shout out to him, okay, original member of the BWO, all right, said, like Cody Rhodes, you know, he, now, you know, like when he very first debuted, and I was like, ah, he told me to look at him, so I always say, day two, I've been a Cody Rhodes fan, okay, I've always thought, there's nothing that Cody, in my opinion, ever did that was not top notch, from Stardust to, you know, American, it, it doesn't matter, dashing Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes to me has always been great, okay, um, but now he's leading the charge along with the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, uh, and, 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 and the Khan family in this new revolution of professional wrestling that a lot of wrestling fans are really out there loving right now. I, myself, I am on the fence, and I'm just being honest. I'm being honest to you, the wrestling fans, to myself. Do I watch it? Yes. Am I entertained by it? Yes. But I would always state what I've always stated before is that hashtag wrestling is storyline. So for me to get into wrestling, I have to get into the storylines. And to me, their storylines are just beginning, right? So other than guys you have a vested interest in, your Johnny Moxvilles, Moxleys of the world, your Chris Jericho's, like I said, the Young Bucks, the elites themselves, you want to see where these stories take you. And right now I am intrigued by the stories, but I still, like I just used the word several times, I'm salivating for more from AEW, Chris. The results this past week were. All right. So first and foremost, in the opener, Lance Archer, who had, was introduced yeah, with Jake friend of the program. Roberts, yeah, friend of the program. And Jake has been putting on some fire promos, but y'all can expect that from Jake. He's one of the best ever do it on that shit. Right. So it was basically a, a glorified squash match. He beat a, a brother named Alan Angels, which when I saw that, I'm like, God damn, another brother getting smashed. So y'all y'all supposed to be the alternative to WWE, but everybody gets over by beating the shit all out the all out the brother. So that's right. cool. <laughs> <laughs> you do notice that, right? You do notice yes. that, right? Okay. That's how they get them over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how they get them over. Just, and just when, checking. And then when they get done with the brothers, they move on to the uh the Latino brothers. Yeah. And then they squash them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. As <laughs> long as you know. Pretty much how this no no yeah. the, the circle of inner has no African Americans. Just just saying that. No, it doesn't. No, okay. It doesn't. Okay. Okay. So next up in one of the more talked about matches of the week, Hiroku or Hiroku. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm That's why I got you reading it. Side. That's why I got you reading yeah. it. I ain't wanna I ain't wanna <laughs> fuck that one up. I said you gonna do that one, brother. That's all on you. Sheeta defeated Dr. Britt Baker. And this match garnered a lot of attention in, in the IWC because Britt Baker legitimately got messed up. Her yeah. nose was broken. Yeah. She was bleeding profusely. And we saw all over the internet, all over Twitters and all that stuff, we saw the images of Britt just... I never thought... I, I, I am personally... I think that some of the talent in the AEW women's division shouldn't be out there. I think a lot of their girls to me are green. I think Britt Baker's one of those green girls. So when again, I say when there's things in AEW I don't like, their great is their great. It's their, it's their that's not so good that I have an issue with. Go ahead, Chris. And you know, it's messed up because the shedding down of America couldn't have come for uh, at a worse time for AEW because they were starting to kind of get their stride and figure it out. And they were putting on, you know, consistently entertaining product and it was getting there. And then this happens and, I, you know, I can only speak for me personally. I'm a little sick and burnt out of the empty arena matches. Like they have done it better than WWE, and they'll have the face. See, see, you sound, you, you sound, you sound like, you sound like, Champ Creed of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence, friend of program, brother of the program. Why do we have to say those words? Which words? I said a lot. It's better than the empty crowd style. Is it? We talked about that before we got on air. I don't. I know some of you can't forget the crowd's not there, but I do. I think some of the stuff they do without a crowd is way better. If the crowd was there, they would shit on it. That's just me. Some of the stuff without a crowd is way better, and I kind of go back and forth because sometimes I think the crowd is doing too much. Right. And they're trying to get themselves over. over yep. Where you're supposed to be an active participant, like it, it, it's like going to watch the Avengers. Yeah. And. T- Starks is doing his monologue and every other word you hear the crowd going, what? 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 <laughs> like, y'all gotta relax a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it's also weird to me when I see these wrestlers come out and they're playing to a crowd that's not there. And I understand that's their training and it's habitual and whatnot. That's what right. they're used to doing. But it's just a little weird. And there's certain points where you need a crowd. Like, you're you're literally playing for the crowd reaction. That's what right. the wrestling is. Exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. Heel. That's what it is. Well, no, I, 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 I pause and I put a quarter in the meter to say Yes and no, because how many empty arenas have these guys all performed? <laughs> Let's just be honest, as the so-called bingo halls, okay? And and 
back in the day, and I get, I'm talking 25 years ago, okay, maybe 30 years ago, there was no crowd there. It was the production that's there that I get was poised to be a crowd, but it wasn't a crowd, just in all fairness. I mean, they did have a studio audience, though. They had about 20, 30 people in there clapping and making noise. <laughs> they did. Okay, I, 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 I'm, those... I'm just joshing. Yes, AEW does the crowd. No crowd better than, than WWE. You happy, Huggo? Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> What's, what else going on at AEW, man? So moving right along, this was the other controversial match of the week, which featured the best friends versus Kenny ah, Omega and Michael. I love Nakasawa. that match. I love. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I love that segment. I, I am slowly becoming a Kenny Omega fan. Continue. Sorry. See, I'm going the other way about Kenny. I loved his stuff in Japan, and the more I see him here in AEW, yeah, eh, yeah, I don't know, man. See? He, he ain't see? got it. Yeah. He ain't got okay. it. Okay. 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 So See, I, I don't. I didn't know that from the Wrestle Kingdoms of Kenny Omega's. You know what I'm saying? So what I saw there, I did, I'm not going to say I didn't like it. I just, again, I'm that guy. If everybody loves somebody, I got to find the flaw in them until they got to make me like them. So that was me with Kenny Omega. I'm, I'm keeping it real. I, I'm keeping the bean. I, 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 everybody loved him. So I automatically was like, nah, he's not that great. And, you know, I come along like Batman versus BBS. I left the movie theater saying, fuck you. This movie's great. Whoa. Damn. Whoa. I did. I did. Whoa. I did. I had to protect Superman. Whoa. I had to protect the Man of Steel. Then I came to my senses and I said, <laughs> that movie is not good. However, it's not bad. But that's that's just me. I, I don't think it's a bad that's movie. Funny. I don't think it's a bad that's movie. That's the... When I left the theater after seeing that, because obviously I, I didn't go, I didn't go in with high expectations, but it's Batman versus Superman. Yeah, so I didn't either. I didn't have any high expectations Batman either. Superman. Right. But I turned to a guy, he looked at me, I looked at him, and the first words out of his mouth were, well, it wasn't terrible. <laughs> and I said, yeah, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. Batman, yeah, Expert yeah, analysis, yeah, it yeah. wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that's Kenny Omega in me right now, man. It's, it's just, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I, I, I just, it's something about, I've always been a fan of the elite in general. Okay, so it's not that I didn't like Kenny Omega, it was just the... He was God to wrestling fans for about a year, two years, and I just didn't see it. That's all. That's fair. That's fair. I, I think he's a really good wrestler personality-wise. He leaves something to be desired, and I don't think he has the personality to lead an organization. If you're trying to, you know, gain garner new attention and garner new fans and maybe welcome back some lapsed fans, right. I don't think he has the personality to do it. But, but moving right along, there was a segment where, and I wanted to just touch on this because I thought this was very well done, hyping up the John Moxley, Jake Hager, yes. local guard in the arena match yes. that is coming up. And I thought they did a really good job of making Jake Hager look like a legitimate badass, which, I mean, frankly, he is a legitimate badass. And it almost makes you forget that at the end of the day, it's just Dean Moxley or uh, Dean Ambrose versus Jack Swagger. The All-American, 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 All-American Five times All American Jack Hager. Sorry, I, I, I'm is always... Jack Swagger not the greatest wrestling name of all time? And I'm so pissed that they wasted it on this dude. No disrespect <laughs> to Jake, but come on, man, that's an awesome it's ass not, name. It's Jack not Swagger. his fault. He cut. Uh, he spoke with a lift, like Mike <laughs> Fyfen. Okay, baby, that's not his fault. The American Vein Duffy words talk like that too, baby. He just couldn't make it work. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. There, there, there are precedents. Mike yeah, Tyson, yeah, Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, he can, yeah. you know, Ric Flair talks with a list. He was yeah. just yelling all the time. Yeah, you couldn't tell. tell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also, I don't know if he's broken, woken, or stoking, but Matt Hardy challenged Chris Jericho to an, and I quote, elite deletion match at the Hardy compound. Basically, part three of the total deletion that we've seen originate in TNA. We saw recreated, which some say not as good, and the WWE, which shocked a lot of people with the WWE's production team. And now let's see what they do here, which to me is probably going to be around a mixture between the two. They got more money than TNA, but they also have a better production team with the cons having, you know, for what it's worth, their production team is very, very good over at AEW for what they're what they're putting on. I'm a big fan of the cutscenes and and how they do with the the, the dark st stages at different places and times. What they did with Cassidy coming out of the in the trailer with the 
trying to be the best friends with Omega. And, and then and he walked right back in the bathroom. I'm starting to like him, which I didn't get at first either. Like, I thought it was kind of corny. Like, I, I still think if Orange Cassidy was in the WWE, he would hate, would hate him. Point blank, they would hate this guy. They would absolutely hate him. But because he's over here, he can be loved. So, but things like that. But you look at Matt Hardy challenging Chris Jericho. You look at Chris Jericho. You look at Cody Rhodes. Let me ask you a question. Pose a question to you. With also, you know, AEW's getting the uh, the revival coming over. Is this something that is becoming a trend that wrestling fans want or do not want? Because there was a time when wrestling fans said, do not bring everybody from WWE over here. But there's also this crop of guys that people feel that never got the chance to be what they could be in the WWE. And, and glamour, you know, like a vampire for the life of something else and what they can do here. Luke Harper, for instance, is standing out and um, uh, in, in, in what they're doing. Um, just involving so many Jake the Snake, so many WWE guys are here. Is that a good or bad thing for AEW? Because me personally, I think it's a good thing. And as long as they still continue to do the stuff with the elite, you can only be as good as your competition. Right. You can only be as at the end of the day, guys, it's still business. So as long as they don't flush out the other guys like um, private party, they don't, you know, uh, uh, J- J- Jurassic Soros and, 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 and Darby and and those homegrown talents, uh, uh, Sammy Cavaro, those homegrown talents up there or not homegrown, but bringing their name to the forefront of talent. If they can continue that the way WCW did it and still push this crop of WWE guys that you've been wanting to see done a different way here, I think it's brilliant booking. What do you think, Chris? I think it's an unfair question, Mike. And okay. I'm not, I, you know, and I'm not talking to you per se. I'm talking to the ICW or the IWC. So let me look directly at you, IWC, when I say this. That's not a fair critique to make. Okay. Because for the last 20 years, for all intents and purposes, WWE has been the only game in town. Right. So that means that anybody who's anybody in this profession at some point in time, at the very least, has had a cup of coffee with WWE. Plus, you got to remember, it's a television product. And a lot of these guys, like the private parties and the Darby Allens, I love them. But they're still learning how to do TV. So why wouldn't you want to bring over some guys and some women that have done TV, that know how TV is supposed to be done? Not only is it going to give you, is it going to upgrade your presentation, but they're going to teach some games to some of these younger cats that are still trying to learn and find their way. So I don't think that's fair because I see that a lot on IWC. You know, oh, well, they're just flicking, plucking the right. WWE. Well, where else were they supposed to get talented from? You know, <laughs> what, Jakara? Right. You know what I mean? We're going to have yeah. Jakara, Mellon yeah. Farmers on TV. Okay, cool. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to relax. Yeah, it was one of the things that I I, I, I like your response to that because I, I, I also think it's an unfair question. I don't like the question. I hate the fact when you even compared earlier in the show about what they do versus them. For me to enjoy AEW, I have to suspend everything that they do over here that I like and that I don't like and find what I like in pro wrestling again. I think too many wrestling fans pick sides without picking what you like. That's why I hate. And you and I've been called it. I've admitted that it's, it's me, okay? Because I, I, I feel like, yeah, and I feel like, no. But I've been called the WWE guy, and I've always, always pushed back and say, no, I'm a wrestling guy because I know what I like. You can't tell me. What, I, don't, I don't let them dictate because I like something they do, like because I liked the Firefly Funhouse match. Because I am an intelligent wrestling fan enough to understand what it meant and what it stood for. That it wasn't wrestling; it was part of the hashtag wrestling storyline that's telling you a brilliant story in the history of these two guys. I understood the Boneyard match because hey, here go a guy that all you guys said you hated or didn't want to. Excuse me, not hated, but can't want, don't want to see anymore and the Undertaker, and it made you say, at least the majority of fans say, wow, well, I can see Taker this way, and you can accept Taker doing it because you've suspended, I say it all the time, it's going to be a new hashtag, hashtag continue to suspend your belief about the Undertaker having mystical powers, and and the lights come on, he's there, the lights go off, he's there, he's coming through the ring, and he's making fire, and, and if you can accept that, you should be able to accept that match of the Boneyard match, because I'm intelligent enough to know that's what it is, but at the same time, what AEW is putting on, I am entertained by because it does remind me and take me back to watching uh, 
you know, TBS's NWA wrestling and, and seeing it this way. This is why, I, which no one talks about anymore. I'm a big fan and was a big fan of NWA Power when it when it when it's on on YouTube. I love the the how it it brought me back to this is what I want in wrestling, and I know this is what pro wrestling is, and that WWE is what sports wrestling entertainment is. It's going to give me wrestling. But mostly centered around entertaining and what they think is cinematography wise a good production, Chris. See, I grade both promotions on a curve. All right, I try to be fair. I grade AEW on a curve because they don't know what they're doing because they've never done it. So you, you have to allow for some growing pains and a period for them to kind of figure it out and, and figure out what they're doing and the best way to present their product. It comes across very schizophrenic right now because they don't really have an identity yet. So they're throwing a lot of shit against the wall to see what sticks. So I grade them on a curve there. I grade WWE on a curve because they just, they're the evil empire and they're so <laughs> massive and they have so many masters that they have to serve. And quite frankly, it's very difficult to put on seven hours mm -hmm. of compelling entertainment week after week after week. It's after a damn easy. week. Go ahead. I just wanted to say it's that. not easy. And then they got to worry about, okay, now we got shareholders, so we can't go but too far. We got to kind of keep it PC. We got to bring some wrestling. We got to bring somebody for that. We got to bring somebody for that. We've got to circus them. We've got to play clay them. Like, there's just so many masters that they have to serve. And I mean, hell, if it was my money, if somebody was paying me $2 billion to put on seven hours of content a week, I'm not going to turn it down either. Because everybody says, oh, well, that third hour of Raw is a killer. Well, how much money is that third hour of Raw bringing in? I'd be on here, right. man. We'd have the Chris Platt hour. We'd have Chris and Mike fireside chats with pipes hanging out in our Hugh Hefner jackets. Right. We'd find a way to fill that time slot. And that's what you have to do. And filling that time slot uh, gave us what some will say they loved. Some would say they hate it in NXT this past week. You know, it's always, well, what show was better? You see that tweeted as soon as Wednesday's, who's what you're watching, who was better? That's the first two tweets you see a lot of people if you follow certain people on Twitter, okay? Who you're watching and who won? How can you tell who won immediately after the show was over? Because <laughs> I, I try to go back and forth, but somewhere I missed something. And as I love the Boneyard match, as I think the best thing I've seen in professional wrestling from a storyline standpoint, standpoint was the Firefly Funhouse match. I think they missed in the Gargano Ch 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 uh, Champ Champa match. Uh, yeah, I, I always try to say it. I always try to catch myself too. Champa match on NXT this past weekend or this past week. Uh, it's supposed to be according to uh, Triple H. This is the last time I'm leaving the arena. Even though I found I thought it was funny that later later that night he was outside outside the door sitting in a chair i thought that i i i i generally loved what they tried to do right here's why i didn't like it it worked for taker and and, and aj because it needed taker to be needed to be done that way it worked from a non-wrestling point from the fire fun house because it wasn't a wrestling match right i don't think it worked from two guys that i've seen Probably have one of the top 10 best matches I've ever seen. Okay, between these two guys done in this way. I think the ending was not good with the turn. I don't think that... Uh, I just didn't like this match because it was these two guys in it. But I, I do give them kudos to WWE for doing it. I think you have to do stuff like this without a crowd. This is what fans, IWC, you've been saying their name all day asked for with lucha underground that was lucha underground that we saw fellas guys didn't watch it though so. okay you didn't watch lucha underground so but a lot of fans who did said yo if wwe can do this soap opera wrestling it'll work for them because they have the production highest uh as you can see but your your thoughts of this match because I, I i do i everything I, I said i stand by Okay, so real quick, before I get there, just a really quick wrap of AEW. So Luke Harper, a.k.a. Brody Lee, he squashed Lee Johnson. And then the main event, which went directly up ahead, this match right here. Yeah, was against Cody this Rose. match. He right. He defeated Sean Spears right. in the TV Championship semifinals tournament. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I turned over the two um, to NXT at this point because I, I don't really care to see Cody or Sean Spears. I love Cody as well, but Sean Spears... I've he, always he, thought he had the shittiest name by being called the perfect 10 because there's nothing perfect and he's damn sure not a 10 about him. That's just me. No, no. I, I, I concur with that assessment. Now, as far as this uh, Ciampa-Gargano match, you know, 
God bless both these guys. They're both great wrestlers. <laughs> they, they are. This feud just wow. doesn't make me moist. No, it, it just doesn't. It Whoa. does not make me Whoa. moist whatsoever. Whoa. It doesn't. Whoa. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. And, I mean, I'm just tired of seeing these two guys wrestle. You know, save their initial bout in the Cruiserweight tournament. And right. then their subsequent bout, I think it was at one of the WrestleMania takeovers when yeah. Chuck was first turned on Gargano. Yeah. Other than those then they had the matches, third one. Then they had the third. To me, the third one was the best. I thought the see, third I'm, was I'm the cool. best. I mean, I thought the that, third I, one was the best. Yeah. I thought the third. They're going for. So yeah. They were. The they were. They were going for. They were going for who they're idols of, and that's Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And again, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of the fan that that doesn't like guys who wrestle all the time. That's just me because everybody does that when they're that good. I, name me anybody you can name me that you ever loved that's been a top guy getting danced that much of their dance partner. Tell me one. Tell me. You can't. You cannot. It's impossible. So when wrestling fans get upset about guys going, yeah, I get it. I don't want to see it either, but it's always been there. Some things will always be pro wrestling. And this is one of them. When you have guys that are this damn good, who were brought up, excuse me, the way they were brought up, you're going to get it again. Now, was this payoff the payoff? No, it wasn't. But it was pretty good. Uh, I get it. And I understand what they're going through. And this is going to go live on in the annals of NXT as one of their great rivalries. And they're going to make a yeah. good video package and DVD for this, <laughs> explaining this feud someday. The ref but was awesome. Just, the ref was awesome. Eh. Oh, shout out to the ref, the one that looked like the situation. He had a hell of a week last week. He was on both nights of Mania. He was on Raw. He was on NXT. He got Shout paid. He got yeah. paid. He yeah. got paid. Cabs here. But I, I, I'm Cabs here. Cabs here, <laughs> bro. I mean, how many times can they do the same thing? How many times y'all gonna pull up the wood and slam each other on the wood, Paul? Like, how many times <laughs> are we going to see the same match over and over again? And it's not any fault to either competitor. They're both great at what they do. Yeah, see, they work hard. You, you, twenty-first century wrestling fans don't have no respect, and, and or I, I, I won't, I won't say that because that's not fair. Okay, you guys just always want it your way, right away. I just don't this get it. I just don't. This get ain't it. Savage Steamboat, sir. This ain't Flair Dusty. This ain't uh, Rock Austin. Hell, this ain't even Cena Orton, and everybody's sick and, 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 and I, and I, oh, I disagree. Because where they are and who they are for where they are to that company, they are. No, they're not. And the, what you name, they're the greatest robberies of all time. According to NXT, this is the greatest robbery of all time. So that's not fair. Right. So, right. so, so in that, in, 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 in that, in that realm, yeah, it is the same thing. But what also took place this week in, a, in professional wrestling was we got SmackDown. And, well, I'll let you guys into it for yourselves. We'll be right back. This is courtesy of the WWE. Paid. Ron already tweeted out how he wasn't getting paid because he wasn't doing shows. So now he's going to be in a program so he will get paid. Again, the American public having to work when it has to work. And WWE is choosing to work like your, some of your employers are. Um, I loved it. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. And I can't wait to see more. You mean Braun Strowman couldn't pull himself up by his bootstraps and, and figure out a way to make some money? I don't know. Maybe he could adjust it like a bunny again or, you know, I don't know. Easter was yesterday. Some people think Easter is about a, about a, a bunny that lays eggs that kids find out in the street. Not about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, ow. Just a little dig for Braun. You know, the, yeah. you remember them insistent I got it. comments that he put out there. I got it. He's a he's a He's a hole of an ass. <laughs> but yeah i love this too number one i popped hard for shut up rabbit yeah. and i brought you in this world so i'm gonna have to take you out being hey, a father might yeah. sure well you, you thought well what's the first thing you think about is the cosby show okay claire huxtable yeah. that's the first that, that's her line <laughs> hook line and sinker like for those who don't get it twisted kill them all came from a show on stars called spartacus Okay, and kill them all was used and they killed them all. And then every movie from then used that terminology. I brought you in this world. I'm going to take you out. Came from Claire Huxtable. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> and I love it. I think it's an entertaining storyline. Like you said, uh, Brad is, or Bray rather is revisiting his, the ghost of his past and checking off his checklist. I think it's good. Now, do they go ahead and flip the title back that quickly on to Bray? I think that might not be the best thing for Bron, but... Who's really that excited for Braun? Who cares about Braun? Braun has yeah. come and gone like the paper towels we use that you use and you throw them away. He's had his moments when he was pulling down uh, 
the whole Titan Trons and whatnot, and they didn't push the envelope. I've never been on Paul's Braun like that, no broke back, but I never thought Braun should be that guy. He's the replacement for The Big Show, who if you're not watched the Netflix series, The Big Show, he's gone, okay? This is who Braun Strowman is. He will be this guy they can use, that you can complete, always use in different areas. That's wrestling, being a giant, being dominant, but being also prone to losing. I would put uh, Mark Henry and Kane in that. Absolutely. All big guys are that way. Absolutely. Yeah, you can heat them up when you need to heat them up, and they're credible main eventers, but they basically serve as gatekeepers. And you you get past them. It's like a video game. You get past them before you get to the big boss. Right. And and Randall Orton is in that category as well. But no, I, I, I like this. And I think we'll get some entertaining TV out of it. Whether we'll get an entertaining match out of it, it doesn't matter. It's something to do. And I like that they put Bray right back in the title picture because, I mean, he deleted the man. So yeah. He deserves to be there. Plus, he's got a rematch of it. So it makes sense. So for the weekend wrestling, I will give it about a four out of five NWA TV, R. Anderson television title runs. Um, I thought it was good TV. It's it's TV when I mean that. it's There's nothing on TV. I watched a horse competition last night on ESPN. And yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So there's nothing on TV. So from the point of perspective that that's on TV, and the best thing that was on TV this past week was the farewell to Modern Family. Yeah, and, which I love. No, not dissing Modern Family. That's what's one of my greatest shows of all time. But it's wrestling. It's entertainment. It's sports entertainment. Between that and what AEW, because I'm I, I I am beginning to turn the page on AEW as becoming a Wow, I want to see this every week kind of guy. So, yeah, four out of five NWA TV titles are Anderson, sir. I think that's fair, man. I like your assessment, and I'm going to concur with that. Four out of five are Anderson NWA TV titles. It is something to watch. I, too, tried to stomach through that horse competition. It, it's one of those things where <laughs> it sounded like a good idea at the yeah, time. Yeah. But then you see it, and it's like, okay, yeah. I'm, we, let's just finish up Tiger King. You can just tell who has money, who didn't. Like, you look at Chris Paul's in the Hollywood Hills <laughs> mountain of his private basketball court, court, and the chick from Chicago Sky is in her crib in the suburban somewhere of Damone, Iowa. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a completely different. Chauncey Billups at his million-dollar crib, even though it was in the suburbs, you can tell it was in a still high sedity area. Like, come on. You, you were telling who had money and who didn't. I thought it was a bad idea. Wrestling being on... It's not the bad idea, and I'm not, and I don't hold the moral compass for those who are saying they shouldn't be there. Rent is an asshole. No one's complaining about Marty Khan telling his guys to show up in Jericho on them. Okay. Well, to be quite frankly, man, asshole of the week has to go to Dana White for trying to once ESPN shut the UFC down. He's trying to find a private island to fight people on yeah. the Bruce Lee Enter the Dragon side of the game. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. you gotta relax, bro. You ain't got no money coming in, okay? <laughs> no fights, <laughs> no money. I tell, I tell people this thing. It's about capitalism, yo. When I found out that, that Amazon is more worth than Disney, my mind has been blown ever since. Okay, so everybody you think got money ain't got money. So these guys need, listen, I, I know, and I'm a, I am a believer of you should all be home. We all would have just stayed home for three weeks, got the food and supplies we needed, okay? Went out sporadically. I think everything would have been okay. But the fact you still have these grocery stores, these warehouses, the mailmen, it, how can it stop if people are still outside? That's just me. So... With that being said, with the essentials, as they're saying, having to be there, the essentials meaning not necessarily needing to get some TP for me bunghole. It also means I have to pay bills. So they're going to be open. So WWE, AEW, these guys are open. And then they gave me a hell of a show for the week. Like I said, four out of the five um, NWA are in Anderson Television titles. But... Just to have some fun for we got out of here, guys. And again, uh, get, thank you, everybody, in the comment section here on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live at youtube.com slash the game, T-H-A-V-1. Um, also on Xbox under my gamer tag, all capital letters, T-H-A space game V-1, as in version 1-9. Yes, that's where I got it from. Triple H and Matt Hardy, okay? I had it before the, wrestler, the, before the rapper of the game had it. God dang it, okay? That is my gamer tag. Come get some. All right, y'all see my post on, 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 on Twitter and on Facebook, how we whooped that team's ass. The Infinity Gauntlet is here. You want some? Come get some. Bad enough, you ain't finna take nothing around here. But for we got here, though, um, I love when you have those, like right now, it's the someone has to go conversations, right? And pick one conversations. And we had that one we talked about where it had Weekend, Bruno Mars, Prince, 
Michael Jackson, Usher, and Chris Brown came around. Just one that popped in my mind just now. And within a half a second, I said, bye, Weekend. Bye. People come back. They want to hate Chris Brown because, you know, his domestic uh, violence accusations or not accusations or, or, or things that he did uh, and putting his hands on the woman, which I believe is all, all, all part of the punk team. Um, I'm not forgiving the guy. Well, I'm not forgetting for forgetting what he did, but it's 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 our job to move on. And they say God judges people. Uh, you know, God judges. I don't, or the other way around. Well, you know, whatever. I have the right to do whatever I want to do because I am of a man who was made from God. But I just thought that was dumb to put him in that category with Mike and all those kind of guys. So a couple ones came up this past week, um, Chris, and I thought were pretty funny. I wanted to bring to the show. And that's WrestleManias. There's nine matches on the screen. You can only have three of these matches. Okay? And in all actuality, a few of these are my favorite matches of all time. Okay? And WrestleMania 13, Bret Hart versus uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Everybody remember the famous blood t-shirt came from that match. Number two on the list they have is the, I believe that's the Heaven versus Hell match between Russell, uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. Then you have WrestleMania, then the third context, you have WrestleMania 10, Michaels versus Razor ladder match. Then you got, I believe that's WrestleMania, help me out with that one. Is that 16 or 17, Chris, with Stone Cold and The Rock? Uh, 17. 17. Then you got um, Angle and Michaels. You got Brett and Owen. You got Michaels and Brett 12. Uh, eight, you got uh, Savage and Steamboat. You know, he mentioned them earlier. And then we have Icon versus Icon, Rock versus Hogan. Which three are you picking here, Chris? Well, I leaned, well, okay, number one, number two, Michaels, Taker, WrestleMania 25, for my money, greatest WrestleMania match, as Michael said. Of all time! Yeah, it's gimmick and French. That's it, don't Right. I know. <laughs> Now, the other two, although I like other matches on this list better than these other two matches, just for historic significance, I feel like we had to put them on there. The first one being number one, Bret the Hitman Hart versus Stone Cold Steve Austin submission match, WrestleMania 13, because for all intents and purposes, this was the beginning it, of the Attitude Era. It really ushered in the Stone Cold yeah. Era the way they it, did it the built, it built It built Austin really? more than people remember. It, it really did, hands yes. down. Yes. And then I have to go number four, where if number one is the beginning of the Attitude Era, mm -hmm. number four, Rock Stone Cold, WrestleMania 17, which many people think that's the GOAT WrestleMania, mm -hmm. that was the season finale of the Attitude Era. Okay. And it's ushered in this new era that we have. It was right after the war, they, did, they had just bought WCW. Rock was getting bigger and bigger in Hollywood. He was going off to make a movie, and then they turned Stone Cold, which is a decision that they probably regret now. But again, the historical <laughs> significance of that match, right. I, I, I couldn't leave it off this list. So that's my three. I think it's very hard. I'm going eight quickly. I still think it's the greatest match I've ever seen in WrestleMania 3 and Michaels. I mean, in, uh, in Macho Man versus uh, Ricky Steamboat, the robbery leading up to it. Um, the exposed turnbuckle, the, the the bell to the throat, all of it. It was just amazing. That match in itself, just amazing. Um, I will go with number two on this list for me would be number one. As you said, the attitude, ushering in the attitude era of Bret Hart versus um, uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I, if you ever, with the special referee being Ken, Ken Shamrock, which brought him in also, okay, Um Everything about this match was great from, from brutality to technicianship to ringmanship. It, it, it all existed in this match. And then number two for me, the, uh, number, the last one I would keep on this match, I know it's going to shock a lot of people, but I got to go Angles Michael. Angles Michael gave me what, Angle, what Michaels and Taker couldn't give me. And that was a technical match beyond its, 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 its wildest dreams. Not, I don't think you can go bad with a single match on here, but if I had to pick three forever... Those are my three that I'm picking right there, Chris. I'm going WrestleMania 13, uh, Brett and, and, and Stone Cold. I'm going WrestleMania, I believe that's still 17, right? With Michaels and and, and, and Kurt Angle. No, that's uh, 21. 21, sorry. Thank you. Yes, you know, I'm not getting my, my, you know, my numbers all the time. And then WrestleMania 3 uh, and Macho Man Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. So uh, those are mine. Another one that I thought was funny this week is they brought up your best Jerichos. All right, this one is a shout out to uh, Beyond, Beyond, uh, God, I'm sorry, I want to get his, Beyond the Ring, I believe. I, I, I took this from off his wall. 
um, that had this. Um, which is your favorite Jericho, the Dolo AEW? Now you got you got the beginning, the beginning Chris Jericho, the uh, the Lionheart, who I was. It's why I'm a Chris Jericho fan. Is Lionheart Chris Jericho? Uh, then you had um, the the continuation of that, the evolution of the the Lionheart Chris Jericho, which just it's still the Lionheart Chris Jericho, but it's more you know just it's you know upped a little bit. Then you have the Y2J Chris Jericho that came in never again with The Rock. Then you had the return of Chris Jericho with the light-up jacket. Then you had the professional Jericho that had the suit and everything. You had the less Jericho. And then you have the one that was the New Japan Chris Jericho, you know, uh, with the paint, faint pace. And you had the current Jericho, the La Champion, if you will, so to speak. My favorite Chris Jericho is very simple and easy for me, to be honest. It's, it's one, two, and three. If not two, three, and four. Matter of fact, I'm going to go two, three, and four to readjust that. Two, three, and four. Because that Jericho is, to me, solidifies him as being one of the greatest of all time in those three Jerichos. Okay? You have the beginning, the list, Jericho. You have the beginning, the first one to defect from WCW to come over to, to, to WWE to show that a smaller guy could go with these guys, which we all knew, but you got to see on a, on a different, you know, plateau. And then, and then when he came back in two, in the early, with that jacket early 2000s, did the haircut he brought the cold breaker he was it, it just re, just him continuing to reinvent himself is beautiful that we have these different variations of him you know what i mean there were one else to say which one has to go do love cactus jack or mankind you know what i mean hello bye do love oh then i love do love but bye do love but which one's your three favorite dracos here um yeah again master of reinvention and it's crazy to think that he's been on our tv screens consistently for the last 25 years not not just in a wrestling capacity either he's done stuff outside of that um i'm gonna go number two because i i love that that monday night jericho or no not the monday night jericho the the nitro evolution this was around the time when he brought out ralphus and i just remember jericho walking to the ring with that weird braid in his hair rocking a dashiki <laughs> with ralphus right. with him. That's just, I felt like that's when he really started to come into his own in WCW. Because before that, he was just white meat baby face that right. won great matches. But he started to get his character together. I also got to go number three, his debut, Ride 2J. I didn't know who it was because I wasn't big on the internet back then. So I was legitimately surprised when he came out and went heads up with The Rock. I thought that was awesome. And he put on great matches during that time. Uh, last one, this is a tough one, but I got to go number six. I loved Lish Jericho. I don't know why I just get a kick out of the list Jericho and that festival of friendship. That's legit. One of the funniest and most entertaining things yeah. I've seen in wrestling in the past 10 years, hands down. So, yeah, like, so those are some things we're doing right now being quarantined. Hashtag stay home, <laughs> stay safe. Hey, guys, I want to thank you guys for listening to us again. This podcast, this show will be available continuously on YouTube. If YouTube, uh, you cannot find us youtube.com backslash the game v1 that's t-h-a i believe that facebook took this down already from when i shared the video with um the the smackdown the Bray watch situation but again i did put up there this video was not ours we did not own the material in the video uh that belonged to the wwe i thought that was the correct copywriting to use to let it go by hey maybe it was maybe it wasn't we will fix that in the future but the audio will still always and forever still be available at your local podcast on iheart radio stitcher uh, uh google play itunes wherever podcasts are sold which are absolutely free uh the real chris pratt where can they find you at chris and who you're part of as well brother before we get out of here Hey man, you guys can find me on Twitter at the Real C Platt. More importantly, make sure you guys check me out on the Chair Shot every Thursday with Pod is War. It's myself, Mr. Andrew Belaz, and the Commissioner PC Tunney. We're going back and forth about the five hottest topics, the latest, greatest, up to date in the news of professional in the world of professional wrestling, rather. So make sure you guys check that out. As always, you can find me at the Chair Shot. And if you got a little disposable income, what's wrong with a little retail therapy? Go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the chair shot. Pick up an official chair shot t-shirt. We've got the reason for the season. Jesus did the job. Save tag team wrestling. Baron Corbin sucks. Hashtag journalism. If you want to rebel against the Kellers and the Meltzers and the Afters and everybody else out there putting out false information and hashtag yes. fake news yes. and diluting and poisoning yes. the wrestling waters. Yes. Well. Rebel against it. And what better way to rebel than a heavy and healthy show of capitalism <laughs> by going to pro wrestling tees.com forward slash deep chair shot please thank you thank you please deep cheap pop but it's not guys and make sure you follow us at 13 40 a.m fox sports on twitter as well as the instagram hashtag uh belt kings as well instagram twitter wherever again social media is so guys listen we're gonna get about it here thank you for tuning in we out of here y'all 
Peace. Yeah. Perfect Plex Radio. We about to go live on him. Mike Knox. That's for three X's cause he's hardcore. Are y'all ready? I go by the name Fred Nux. We about to give y'all something special.